Yo, stop, stop. So every day I'm reading articles about how researchers are using basically like simulations of reality. So simulations of neurons, of uh, compounds, of atoms to find new discoveries. Just a few days ago, researchers at IBM actually created an artificial neuron uh, in a physical device, but it mimics and simulates the same activities that happen within human neurons. Famous geneticists like George Church and uh, Craig Venter and others are actually trying to create a human genome from scratch, where you basically just like print out the DNA for an entire human genome. And there's an article out today explaining how Harvard and MIT researchers actually use machine learning and all of the potential molecules that we know of so far um, to find the perfect molecule for OLED screens. OLED screens or OLED screens are awesome because you can make them super flexible and thin because they don't require a backlight. Basically, you just apply an electric current to a phosphorescent molecule and it creates its own light. So they've discovered the, uh, the molecules, the phosphorescent molecules for the red and the green light, but obviously with a pixel you need RGB, you need red, green, blue. So they didn't have one for the blue light yet. So what they did is they basically took a, a they built up a library of 1.6 million organic molecules that they thought might fit the bill, and then they applied machine learning and just had it simulate every single molecule. Each molecule was simulated for about 12 hours, and so it basically just was looking for which, which molecule would provide the brightest blue. Um, and out of that, that millions of candidates, they ended up with 2,500 for the human system. So by that millions of candidates list, now they get down to like a couple of hundred they can start testing in labs. Um, and if they find the right kind of blue that can be inexpensively manufactured at scale, that's awesome. Because the promise of all those screens is cheap, inexpensive, wall-sized uh, screens that are literally paper-thin or flexible, so we could have like wristbands and stuff. The point here is that this methodology in science is kind of becoming the norm. Basically take big data, a database of all the known elements and things in the universe at the core level, um, use machine learning algorithms and simulate discovery. Stephen Wolf from the guy behind uh, Wolf from Alpha and Mathematica pretty much predicted this and wrote a book on it and, and ca called it a new kind of science. He calls it, you know, mining the computational universe. And so I wonder why we haven't yet kind of created a, de a decentralized universal data store of every known law in the universe, every base fundamental element, and every known atom and every known molecule. Suppose you created each of these laws, each of these known elements, each of these known atoms as their own smart contract on the blockchain um, that actually described in code their function. Because every atom, every element, every compound, um, it's not just this thing that kind of sits there. It's kind of like it's got its own laws and properties attached to it, and it's kind of like its own little running computation. So perhaps if you define everything, like subatomic particles, um, atomic particles, elements, compounds, universal laws, everything, define it in code, then you could simulate everything. Perhaps start off with a hydrogen atom, like how do you simulate that as a decentralized app, as a DAP, as a smart contract? How do you define the hydrogen atom as code? So then you throw this all off on the blockchain, so every little, every little atom, every little quark, every little uh, compound has its own smart contract, its own code, and then you'd have subcontracts that explain how those are connected. With each new discovery, you basically create a new piece of code that simulates and describes that particle, that discovery, and you add it to this, this decentralized blockchain, and it automatically works out where it fits. From that point on, science basically becomes a, a mining the computational universe. You explain to this system, you write a contract explaining the properties and the outcomes that you want. So for example, the scientists trying to discover the, the blue fluorescent molecule for the OLED screens, what they can instead do is write a smart contract that describes the code for the properties and outcomes they desire, and upload that to this blockchain. So like on one side you have this kind of decentralized, universally accessible, open, semantically structured um, data store of all scientific knowledge, and on the other side you have all the outcomes and properties that we want to... Then it's just a matter of like running machine learning algorithms on supercomputers and on you know, distributed clusters to basically simulate all possible scenarios to find something that matches the desired outcome. And I think the more we uh, kind of get towards building that type of system where science is really a machine-driven uh, endeavor, whereas AI basically simulating all possible scenarios and picking the one that fits us better, I mean, shit, if, if machine learning and AI actually fuels scientific progress, it'll hit an exponential pace. I mean, every minute there'll be brand new scientific discoveries, and it'll just be a matter of which one fits best for our research. But as we go further and further down that route, which seems inevitable because it's already happening now, um, it's going to become more and more obvious that our reality is a whole bunch of computational processes. I mean, if every atom, if every molecule, if every plant, if every organism, if all of these things can be boiled down to a computational simulation, a piece of code, and it matches with what's seen in reality, then what is that? Well, firstly, if you see reality that way, if you see reality as basically like computational code, I mean, as DNA, as atoms, as molecules, then that's awesome because then we can hack it, we can evolve it just like any computer system. But then that does raise the question of whether or not we're um, in a simulation. Um, and it'd be awesome to somehow prove that experimentally one day, um, find the base, very simple equation that's just iterated. If you look at Benoit Mandelbrot and like the Mandelbrot set and fractals, that's really awesome. Um, but also like Stephen Wolfram's computational equivalence, which basically says that really tiny, simple equations can create complex intelligent systems. In line with that, there's this other thing called computational irreducibility, which basically says that when you run these equations, these fractal equations, they become very complex very quickly and produce unexpected outcomes that you can't even... <laughs>
Um, so perhaps the scientific method for the past couple of hundred years has just been trying to identify the little computational processes that have been running in this computer simulation we call reality. Using AI and machine learning, we can simulate entire universes, find little computational processes that match our own reality, and then give us engineering solutions to progress humanity forward and transcend our future.